Hello, good evening. Welcome to Secure the Continent. I am Dakbo Adigboye. This is where you get to know the security situation across the African continent. But before today's discussion, let's take a look at some of the top security headlines across Africa. Now, the first being a gunman abduct a prominent Lagos opposition leader on Expressway. Rebels assault claims uh, 19 lives in Wesso town. We also have military leaders revoke 2015 Ogier's accord with separatist rebels. And then court orders Israel to prevent acts of genocide, stops short of ceasefire order. Don't go anywhere, I will be right back. In the face of insecurity in Nigeria, a northern Nigeria, especially Plateau state, has been at the forefront. On Wednesday, no fewer than 30 persons were killed by armed men in Mango, local government area of the state. We have more details on Plateau state security situation in this report. Take a listen. Apart from these eight suspects, there were nine others arrested by the security agents in connection with the recent attacks in Mangu local government area of Plateau State. It is still not clear what the cause of this most recent incident is, but many lives have been lost, just as houses, worship centers, hospitals, and other properties were burned. Misunderstandings come very often, so th there's no specific issue that you say this is the one that's always causing it. What happened now? you know something caused it what has been happening before different uh, things caused it so each one that comes we are prepared to handle it as it comes in furtherance of putting an end to the recurrent issues in these affected areas more manpower has been deployed an attempt by some criminal uh, assailants in Tanyam district to set fire on some worship centers was prevented by the swift intervention from the police and with the help of some elders of the community and other security agencies. Also, in another development, to further strengthen the existing security architecture in Mango LDA and ensure compliance with the curfew imposed by the government and prevent further escalation of the incident, which is almost snowballing into an ethno-religious crisis. I have ordered the deployment of additional special intervention personnel to Manuel VA to be commanded by the area commander Pachi and restore normalcy in that area. Exhibits recovered from these suspects include machetes, kegs of petrol, gas cooker and other items. While security agencies continue to work towards a peaceful plateau, members of the public are advised to always cooperate with them by providing credible information. In JAWS for New Central, I am Chizoba Anyoui. Dr. Dieli Aigbe, criminologist and security consultant, and also Ambassador Melvin Eje, Executive Director, Global Peace and Life Rescue Initiative, and also security expert both Lee uh, joined me from Plateau State. Thank you so much for your time, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Great. Now, let me start off with you, uh, of course, uh, Ambassador AJ. Now, the major cause of the ongoing religious crisis in Mango area of Plateau State is rooted in an incident of castle rustling, which occurred on Monday in the community. Now, this statement is according to the Nigerian Defense Headquarters. I'd like to know your reaction to this. My reaction is very positive, and I think I commend them to have come out very boldly to, to state the obvious, which is this one fact that people are scared of talking about. But like I've always maintained in all my interviews, I've told you guys several times that most of the crisis on the plateau is criminal-rooted, is, 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 is criminality. 
it's high time we call the spade the spade. That's the only way we can get a peaceful plateau. That's the only way we can get a secure plateau. The era of calling uh, the era of calling this criminal our own, the era of um, criminal, uh, making criminals look like a hero, the era of making making them look like matter is over. We must expose criminals every point in time on the plateau and every part of Nigeria. That era is gone. The spade must be called a spade. Issues must be addressed as they are. The major cause of conflict on the plateau, like I've always maintained, is criminality. And I'm glad the defense department are bold enough to have stated, stated as it is. Reaction to this. Dr. Ayegbe, uh, what do you make of the statement by the defense headquarters on the latest attack which happened in Mango local government area? Yes, uh, I, 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 uh, I want to give credence to the military for accepting that for the first time. If you can understand, you can follow the, the trend of the crisis in Jos. This is the first time the military is coming to, and maybe because of the pressure of the government, because uh, if you recall the first uh, case they had, the, the governor said that the political will of the politicians, of our leaders, will be very, very critical, to play a very formidable role. And so maybe because of the pressure, or Nigerians are really, but the first time the, the military is even responding, the first attack they had, that was the Christmas Eve, they were not respond from the military. So this is the first time. The military is holding up to their responsibility and taking charge that these are the... So I know they're able to get, get that through that intelligence, you know. So that's a coming out is a welcome, a, a new step of direction we need to take. You know, so I want to uh, praise the military for taking that step of coming out, holding up to their responsibility. And uh, since we've, at least I've got an insight of what is happening now, uh, cut through uh, issues and everything and head issues. So, so previously before now, there was nothing like that. They will not make any comment, no feedback and... So the governor came out and saying that the political will of the of the of the political leadership will very play very committed role. Mm. I can see that they are taking that political will now. The president is the national assembly are acting towards this now. So pressure is coming from different parts of the country, and uh, that's why they're taking uh, taking that responsibility to act now. Mm. Uh, but uh, I'm sorry to just cut in here and also uh, sort of uh, well, I call it react. Now, one would expect, would, I mean, from what you're saying right now, you're saying that there is progress in that fight. I mean, this particular attack actually did happen just weeks, you know, uh, after the very unfortunate Christmas Eve attack. And I know that in that particular local government, too, the government actually did impose a 24-hour curfew. So I, I just want to ask you, gentlemen, I'm still with you, Dr. Aigbe. Would you say there's progress in restoring peace in the plateau, true progress? There's, there's progress with, the, with, with this step of direction that we are taking now, the government, the military coming out. It, 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 it's Christmas Eve attack. The, the military didn't come out, didn't say anything. They were just, say, they were just silent. They were not, they were not, uh, they were just, uh, they, they were just silent about it. And the governor came out that the political will of the government will really play a very formidable role. And that, that's why the military is coming out now to say, okay, these are two intelligent guys that have gotten and able to come out. They did a press conference to the world to see these are the details of what is happening in the play too. So people will not read political meanings to it that in and the, the, the military that constitutionally empowered or the law enforcement agents are constitutionally empowered to take charge of it. That anybody that is thinking otherwise, they will have to think, to, think, think twice before they come up with their need. So because they, they needed to respond swiftly to people, say so people are getting agitated. And uh, because of the viral video that came out, that the people have to use self help to protect themselves. I know. So they have to now come up with that strategy to say, okay, we are top of the game. And uh, it, you can see the, the tension is being reduced a bit now. So I mm. believe if, to, so if the military are able to sustain the momentum, we can get you can nip it to the board. And we, for the first time, we have gotten arrests. We have seen arrests. The Christmas Day uh, attack, there was no any arrest. Nobody was being known. So for the first time, I, I think believe there's a progress. A progress being made by this uh, this attack now. That at least we have, we have gotten some arrests, and they would proper intelligence we're able to get the uh, insight of what is and how to how to bring peace to the plateau. All right, I'll go back to you, uh, Mr. Aj. Now. There was a, a video, a viral video that was trending about a very prominent uh, religious leader who sort of robed these attacks around uh, ethnic stroke religious uh, coating, saying that um, there was an agenda, right? You said that most of these attacks are criminal, criminally rooted. But uh, I also put it to you. Uh, is there substance to the claim of this uh, very... A prominent uh, religious leader. I don't know if you've seen that viral video uh, that was making the rounds uh, to his claim. 
Okay, if, if, if the video coming from the Khan chairman of yes, Imangu, the Khan chairman, exactly. Making reference to Imangu, I think that video is very, very, very unfortunate, highly insensitive, and I think that is not correct. At the point that the Plateau State is trying to heal from this conflict. For me, that video is only inciting. That video is actually very. But don't you think it was also speak, saying the obvious? No, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Particularly when he, he channel his energy, channel is given to the Nigerian military, people who don't sleep, who are out there trying to keep peace on the plateau. Let, let me be very honest with you. That video frustrates me as a person because I know all the effort the Nigerian military are trying uh, are putting to keep plateau safe. I know everything the Nigerian military are doing to keep plateau safe. I know the role they play, I know. So why channel your grievance to the instead of facing the issue of criminality? Now, he's, he was called by the defense secretary to come and, come and prove his, his, his claim. I saw it on presently this evening, he said he's not going to defend. If you are alleged that soldiers were biased, if you are alleged that soldiers were not fair to you, what stopped you from coming out then to substantiate your claim? These are people who don't sleep. These are people who stay under the sun. These are people who are constantly in the forest trying to keep to safe. I speak for, with fact. You don't, you don't know how the Nigerian military of today can aid the killer to kill Magavol people. There's no deployment you are going to make in Mangu there that you won't have Christians, that you won't have Muslims among them. So that's practically not possible. Now, if such a man who is an authority, who is supposed to be a clergy, makes such an allegation, I ought that he should have come out so substantiated. Let me give you an example. The GOC 3 and 1 division, Major General Abia Bakar, I'm sure since incident, he hasn't slept. That man is every day is with a troop. He fights from the front line. They have neutralized several of these bandits. They have made several arrests. So it's very painful that such a clergyman who should be telling the truth will come out blatantly to come and lie against the Nigerian military. I'm not their spokesman, but that's very painful. At the point, you should be encouraging them. You are telling you, are, you said you want them to withdraw the military. I am sorry. It won't be a good thing for the Nigerian military to withdraw from Mangu or Plateau State. I know what I'm talking about. The firepower this Aslan come with. It, take, it will take only the Nigerian military to stand there. This is, a, this is an obvious fact that most people can't tell you, but I'm saying it on national television so that anybody who cares to, to hear. If you have made an allegation against the Nigerian military, you said you have facts. You saw when your people were killed. You saw when the soldiers were leading people to go and burn the house of, of, of Christians. For crying out loud, what stopped you from coming out to substantiate such claim so that those soldiers will be arrested, possibly punished? I'm a Christian for crying out loud. But I think it's high time we call this pay this page. Okay. The okay, soldiers I'm... did so well in Mangu. For mm -hmm. me, I am passing a complete vote of confidence on the Nigerian military. They okay, have well... done so well. If there's anything we should do, is to encourage them. Okay. Yes, we may have some battles among them. You can't take out some battles among them. Naturally, in every human endeavor, in the churches, in the mocks, there are bad eggs. But, so if you have the evidence that we have these bad eggs who may have committed our offense, what's stopping from coming out to substantiate your claim? An invitation is not arrest for crying out loud. He could as well go to the defense secretary with his lawyer. He could go with very senior military or government official to go and this claim so that the military was to purge itself if it is true. For me, I'm disappointed at that allegation coming from such a, such a Nigerian. Okay, Ambassador Melvin, I, I'm still going to stay with you on this one. Now, I remember some time ago we had, uh, I think recently, we had a conversation on the same issue as regards security on the plateau. And you said that uh, some key or powerful people uh, behind the unrest. I don't know if you recall. And then you yes, said, I was do. Still, uh, do you recall? I, very well. I said it on this platform. I'm going to repeat yes. it again. Yes. And you said you were still trying to gather your findings. So have you been able to collate names now? Like I said, we are working very curiously. And why we are very suspicious is that we, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a civil society person. I have very credible intelligence. We wonder why people were arrested from the conflict in Plateau State, some very top officials will be making calls that should be released. That is very uncalled for. They should allow for prosecution. People must face justice for their actions. We are still gathering intelligence, and in due time, we are going to come out with the names of those persons who are influencing them in, in, in Nigeria. Enough is enough. Plato has had enough blood. I don't think anybody should aid anybody who has killed somebody or who has destroyed property. It's the pure act of criminality, and anybody who is found wanting should be allowed to be prosecuted. All right, uh, let me go to uh, Dr. Egbe right now. Now, the former vice president, that's of Nigeria, Tiko Abubakar, has bemoaned the recurrent cycle of violence on the plateau, saying the apparent lack of proactiveness, particularly on the part of security agents, was a matter of grave concern. Now, 
Is there any form of validity to this claim? Dr. Ayegbe, are you there? Okay, I, I didn't get the question, please. Okay, I, I just read to you uh, one of the statements or uh, the position of the former vice president of Nigeria on the security situation on, on the plateau. He said that uh, at the recurrent cycle of violence on the plateau is an apparent lack of uh, proactiveness on the part of security agents. Do you think this is a matter of grave concern? Is there validity to this claim? Yes, he, 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 yes, he, he, he has a very good point there. Yes, uh, you know, our law enforcement are not very, very. Uh, they, are, they are not very. Uh, they are proactive. They're proactive. They are not very reactive. You know, mm. so that, that's the that's, that's the model, the model we are trying to talk. We are trying to make provisions to the government to to make to make the work more easy for them. But I understand the psyche of the military. The military has been traumatized. The, the, what you call military psychology, the effect of it. Of, the, 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 the constitutionally, the military are not supposed to be in the internal security of our country. That's the, that's the work of the police, you know. But because of the, the, the internal security crisis we have in Nigeria, the military has to be drafted into it to solve the business. So they, they, they are straight. If you, if you study military psychology, there's a battle fatigue in our military now. They are, they are fighting insurgency in the Northeast, you know, a lot of insecurity. In, you know. So uh, if they, even the, press, the, the, the governors of the Central, Ben, ben Way, Nasara, have agreed that they need to come together, not from that synergy. You replica what happened at the Amotek in the, in the in Southwest. So if they can replicate that sincerity, I believe if the, the political leadership, the political will of our leaders able to act, ability to turn intention into action, is very critical in this uh, in this narrative. Now, if they can able to put word into action, I believe we're able to sustain it. So the, the vice president is right in, a, in his narrative uh, saying that uh, our law enforcement are not very, very uh, reactive. They're not, they're not very uh, reactive to, uh, to events and uh, yeah, yeah, it's really affected. Yeah. So the, the criminals that think the vulnerability of our law enforcement not being reactive, uh, not being proactive in acting to take decisions in order to act. So I, I understand that the former president, the former president spent almost about 11.18 18, trillion in the last 80, 80 years of his government. But we are just we are just spending money, but we are not seeing the effect of it in our in our, in our law, law enforcement. That's, you can see it's a strain our law enforcement uh, and, and the, the criminals are taking the. the Taking the vulnerability of our law enforcement to int and, and tend to strike. And that's what we call the insecurity. That's what the insecurity is escalating at a high level. And it's so sad that Nigeria is, it has this narrative or metaphor that life is very brutal and, and nasty now. So the life of Nigerians are short, brutal, and nasty. So you can see the life of Nigerians don't mean anything to any, anybody. Again. So the criminals are taking the vulnerability of our law enforcement to, to act effectively to cause this havoc. It's very sad and uh, it's, 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 it's heartbreaking. Okay, I, I mean, at this point, we need to go on a quick... ...to adopt community okay. policing, which is very critical in our law enforcement agency, because our internal security is in crisis. So we mm. have to bring policing, state police now. But we're in democracy, and people say that Nigeria is nowhere matured enough. We have about 24 years of our democracy now. We are just talking that we're not... So it will help, it will help, it will help the law enforcement agency to, to community policing really help. But we mm. talk about building inter interagency uh, collaboration. It's very help, it will, All it, right. it will really help. I think communication to be very, very critical too oh. in fighting this. Uh, All right, Dr. Aigbe, I'm sorry I need to cut in here. We need to go on a quick break. And of course, when we return, I'll be taking Ambassador uh, AJ's uh, reaction to the assertion of the vice president, the former vice president. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining, this is Secure the Continent, and we have been looking at the insecurity in Nigeria, particularly in Plateau State. And of course, we still have on the show Dr. Diyeli Ayegbe, a criminologist and security consultant, and also Ambassador Melvin Ejay, Executive Director, Global Peace and Life Rescue Initiative, and also security expert. Both are joining from Plateau State, Nigeria. Gentlemen, thank you so much for hanging on. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, I'd like to go uh, to you, uh, uh, Ambassador AJ. Now, your reaction to what the former mm -hmm. vice president actually did say uh, concerning the security apparatus, saying that uh, security agents uh, are rather more uh, reactive than being proactive. Do you think so in the case of Plateau State? Why I hold the vice president in the very high esteem as the former vice president and the political leader of this country? I do not totally agree with him. Yes, we have lapses in the security because of some uh, technical know-how, because of some lack of political will. I agree. 
But I do not think, in, building intelligence is very expensive. And one of the problems we have on the plateau is the lack of community cooperation with the security, particularly the Nigerian military. They, they, like I've always maintained in several fora, the military are not magicians. They are not uh, spiritualists, and they won't do otherwise. If you don't share intelligence with them, they are not going to manufacture this intelligence. They don't have, they are not fortune tellers. So they, if you have an attack coming from one front and information are not available, what are they going to do? There are no drones in our forest. There are no cameras in our forest. I'm not trying to build up excuses for them, but I think the military also need to open its door more to the civilian populace to interact with them so that they know some of these challenges. If you're talking about being, being, being reactive, I agree with the vice president in, in some quota, but this, there are several factors that is mitigating against them being very proactive. But in fairness to the ones in Plastic that I've seen, that I've worked closely with, they have been very reactive. Unfortunately, they don't tell their stories. They make several arrests on the ground. They do they neutralize several of the bandits on the ground. I enjoy the military. This is a democratic army. They should speak out more. If they take an action, they should speak out. But because of their operational uh, models, they don't speak out. They don't they don't do more plenty of press conference. They are doing so much, yet the people don't know much. Now, the vice president's statement is not fair to them. It's, it's completely not fair, not, 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 not fair to them. In this particular crisis, they didn't get, I don't think they had any uh, prior intelligence. It was not planned to happen. It's just, it was just a spontaneous attack that happened. A header was trying to cross the road. Uh, sorry, a, 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 a Macavo guy was trying to cross the road, collided with the, with the header, and that's where it started from. Before you know it, criminals put law into the hands and they burning property, started looting property. How could you have such, such, such intelligence? What could you have done even if you have uh, all the gadgets in the world? You won't see it coming because it was just, it was just continuous. So I think the politicians should do more by making sure they give the military and the security agencies what they need. The major issue we have that is mitigating against security is lack of political will. It's lack of sincerity on the part of politicians. Let's get close to these military guys. They have problems, mm. but they can't really speak out. Mm. They can't speak out, my brother. Uh, some, oh, of oh, budget so, hear, so, some of these budgets you hear, some of these you hear on, 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 on Nigerian budget. When these budgets are approved, how much really gets to them? Mm. You can hear 700 billion to the Nigerian army, 300 billion to the Nigerian to defense Dakota, 500 billion to DSS. How much actually gets to them? Do they release this? So are you so saying, are you saying in spite of all of the monies being voted, quite a number of them uh, in reality are underfunded? Yes, they're underfunded. I can say that, put me anywhere. You have two trillion naira budgeted for the Nigerian army. At the end of the day, you discover that Less than 100 billion gets to them in reality. Why, why do you think that is? Of course. Why do you Let's think that is? I think, I think the, the, it's lack of priority. Our government have not really prioritized security. The political class have not really prioritized security. The political class are... No, but but, but you, said, you said big monies are usually voted, but at the end of the day, uh, trickles get to them. So it means that something yeah. gets lost in transit. How is that? They, 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 not, not that they lost in transit. You... When money are voted, they have to be released from the CBN and from, from the Prime Minister of Finance. If they are mm. not released, what are they going to do? Are they going to beat the finance people or beat the CBN? If I vote 100 billion for you and every month I give you 100 million, what are you going to do? You have to work with what you have. Most times when the ministry submit their budget, they submit to the proposals for equipment, for training, for logistics and, and remuneration. Now, what it, when, when this money comes, they come very small sometimes. And when they come, they have to prioritize. Instead of buying this equipment that will make them uh, proactive, they will use to pay salaries, need to pay some few allowances. Let me shock you on national television. Quote me anywhere. From November to date, the military have not been paid their RC allowances. They want civil operations. Okay, sorry. You said they have not been paid what allowance? RCA. RCA. Yeah, RCA. Okay. They have not been paid. They, they can't, they can't Sorry, what, ask, what, what military? Are you talking about the military in Plateau State? No! The Nigerian military on, the, on operation. The ones on that defense quarters, the ones on that military quarters, the ones in Air Force, Air Force Navy, they have not been paid the RC allowances. I don't know if they paid this today. I don't know if they paid them for this today. But do, do, but do you have claims to this? Do, do you have any November substantial today. proof to this, please? Of course, I don't know I was going to ask this question. I've come up with a document. But I'm telling you that confront them. Let them take the truth. Go to go and have a closed-door meeting with them. They're mm. going to be paid the RC allowances. 
and they will be out there in the rain, be out there in the sun, go to this forest, they leave their family at home. That alone is enough to traumatize them. We need to be careful how we demoralize our soldiers. They have a lot going in their mind. They might rather talk about the trauma from fatigue. They are not even supposed to be in internal operations. I'm giving you this privileged information because I know. Mm. I, I, I'll come back to you, Ambassador AJ. Let, let's... Uh, let's... Nigeria. Mm. Let's take the reaction of uh, Dr. Aigbe uh, to all of this. I mean, Ambassador Njia has said quite a number of things, uh, talking about uh, the psyche of many of the soldiers, some of them not being properly paid or motivated to be on the battlefield. Do you think this is also, uh, there's a substance to this? And uh, has that in any way sort of uh, crippled their effectiveness when it comes to this fight against the insurgents? Well, uh... I know the. I, I want to debunk what he said about the, the politicians not too keen about security. I don't think that. I don't think that is true. Uh, yeah, the, the, this present government and the then Dream Buhari government, I, I made earlier that he spent almost about 18, 11.18 trillion naira for the past eight years in government. So if the government, the, if you look at the history of our budget, the uh, defense budget has taken the lion's share in our budgeting. And even this budget, the 2024, so, uh, the, the, the budget of defense is the highest among, apart from when we were talking about the educational sector and everything. So, the, the issue when he said that the military, the politicians are not taking this, it's, uh, the, uh, I'm not trying to take side for, the, for the, uh, our politicians, but you look at the cost of spending on our, on our military has really been very high because of the insurgency and everything. You know, and he coming on air to say that this is not repaired. I don't think it's not proper for us to, sir, because you, 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 how did you get that intent? How did you get that report? How did you get that? How did you confirm that? And in the military, you don't just give information without verifying it. Like, it involves command and chain control. For coming on air to say that not be paid this thing, I don't, I don't know why it's, it's not appropriate at this time. The people have died. And I know the cycle of the military has been strained through the law enforcement agency. The battle fatigue has set in as restrained law enforcement. But the patriotic law enforcement, I really salute the Nigerian military for the effort. I know they, it's, it's the one who blame the military for not being taken action. Or not acting effectively, it got the command and chain rules system. You can't just go there and start taking acting on your own without permission, without being given that command to. So that's why it has affected our law enforcement and make them look at the number. They have look at our performance and really elsewhere in the world. You can see the performance in peacekeeping uh, effort. So the, the, the I understand the psychology of the Nigerian military. They, they they are not meant to fight internal security because of being, not being very effective in the end. So I, I've already made recommendations to them several times. In, in the, some previous platform, I found myself that they should use the use of technology to help our law enforcement. Because a lot of them, they have there's battle fatigue they're setting in, they have been traumatized psychologically, that they're, they're, they're in the bush fighting for us. And you know, the, the allowances being paid to them, you know. As one of the senators came one of the this and was talking about they, they need to pay them well to motivate them. That's why the private private partnership come in, PPP, public and private partnership come in to help the military and the law enforcement agency to come to to form the collaboration, form that synergy. So that can fight this war of, of insecurity. Mm. I mean, uh, very, very, of course, uh, spiky, well, I say allegations there. But uh, right now, let's go on a quick break. When we return, we'll be looking at the way forward. How do we come out of this conundrum on the plateau? Of course, stay with us. We'll be right back. This is still Secure the Continent on New Central Television, and we are looking at matters arising concerning security on the plateau in Nigeria. Of course, we're still live on the program. Ambassador Melvin Eje, uh, Executive Director, Global Peace and Life Rescue Initiative, and also Dr. Dieli Aigbe, Criminology Security Consultant, uh, live on the program. Of course, uh, let me continue with you, Dr. Aigbe, before we went on that break. Uh, as a form of resolution to this, uh, will I call it, uh, very, very unfortunate scenarios happening on the plateau. Some have suggested kinetic and non-kinetic approach. Uh, what do you think uh, the government, uh, not just the government alone, but stakeholders uh, can do to sort of resolve these issues, this issue or issues from the root cause? Let me give you a typical scenario. For instance, part of the security report uh, concerning what happened in Mango said, it just started with disagreement between two people, one a native, another from 
a certain tribe, the Fulani tribe. Uh, the one, the native was on a motorcycle trying to, you know, uh, wanted right of way, but the other was a header, right? And then they had a clash and it escalated into, you know, a civil breakdown. And then you look at it. These issues could have been resolved amicably, but you'd also want to say maybe there are other underlying factors. So I want to ask you, what do you think can be done to address these issues from the root cause? Yes, that's what we talked about. Community policing is very critical. It's really helpful. We're talking about uh, community engagement. We need leaders, youth, uh, women leaders to come together to form that synergy. Because the law enforcement agency cannot do that alone. It's not part of the... It's, we, we have a stake together as Nigerians. We don't have to shift the responsibility to law enforcement agency, okay, because constitutionally, they're empowered to provide security. And so they cannot operate on by their own self with their own accord. Constitutionally, we, we, have, we have a stake in Nigeria because if there's insecurity or any conflict, it affects us psychologically. And the, the federal government in the narrative that they want investors to come in to invest, and, and if they start seeing the signals that Nigeria is not safe, not a safe haven for them to come and do business, it will, that, that uh, investment the government is looking for will not be able to. So we, we talked about community engagement, involving the communities, changing the narratives, involving traditional rulers, involving religious leaders, you know, because Nigeria is a very religious country. We are very religious. We call God every time. We do prayer meetings and everything. We go to mocks and pray, do fasting period. Nigeria is a very religious, one of the most religious countries in the world. So you use the change this narrative now. We've got the shadow leaders involved. We complete engagement. You know, we talk about resilient and community engagement. You bring that consensus and agreement to it to solve that problem. It will really go a long way. And community police, we made a recommendation. The, 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 the police cannot do it alone. So we have to have a stake in Nigeria because if we don't have that uh, at a national consciousness, of a, 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 a national ethos, you know, the values that the Nigeria, we call of Nigeria, want to want to want a peaceful and a prosperous country for Nigeria for our children, our grandchildren. So we have to have to have that stakeholder. So, so we have to form that community town hall meeting with with the, the community, the, the law enforcement. Not just because they are a law enforcement, they are just privileged to be there, you know, to serve us and everything. So we have to. They need to engage the law enforcement agent, uh, and, and community leaders and and traditional rulers. Religious bodies change its narratives because we are very, we always listen to our religious leaders very well. So if we now change this narrative, get them involved into it, and community politics will very play a very critical role and ability, the intention of the government too, is to turn those intentions into action and corruption in the system. If they can nip it to the board, corruption has been a canker worm in Nigeria, and, and, and the funds being released should go down to the to, to, to the rank and files in the military, not some few few cabals clicks will now hijack the process. And that, that's how the moral of our military is being strained. That they are doing this, this, this disorientation within them, they have to perform, and because the money is not trickling down to them, you know, they, they rank, and because they, 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 in, in policing, it's part of the words, the command and control system. So you don't question the authority, you don't question the leaders, whatever they do is like a, God has spoken, and nobody can challenge them. So these are the things we have to do. So we have to involve community engagement and be resilient among the communities. It will go along with traditional leaders should have a stake, a stakeholder meetings, a community, because they have to have it, they have this in Nigeria. If Nigeria is not secure, how well do you have to go? You know, we have another place, and Nigeria is one of the biggest countries in Africa, the largest in Africa, and the world, the whole world is watching us and um, watching us. The, the, All right. The, the, uh, watch us the, the I good mean, things. Dr. Ibe, I, I, I need to cut in here. I mean, you, you've talked about community engagement and uh, as a yes. way to, of course, ensure that environmental solution is um, uh, found to this problem. But how about the aspect of restitution? Uh, what do I mean? I've said this before, you know, on the program, where uh, like what we saw in South Africa during the apartheid when Mandela came in and he had the family. It's a suit, uh, the commission. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, it's, I didn't get that. It's commission by doing this was led by this lead Desmond Tutu. Exactly. So I mean, uh, because I, I've said this before on the program, I served on the plateau and I witnessed the crisis myself. I remember meeting a 19-year-old boy then by the name of Michael, who told me that he wasn't going to run anymore. But this time around, he was ready to kill people because they had killed his friends. And they had killed people he knew. And for that reason, he saw uh, that avenue as an opportunity to carry out his own revenge. So that's to tell you that that's deep-seated. That's beyond uh, military offensive. You know, uh, that, that, that's a, that, that has to do with healing, right? Psychological and also emotional healing. So I, I would also want to put that to you. Don't you think that the government or private uh, bodies should also factor 
that kind of arrangement in resolving these issues from the root cause? Yes, that's what we said. We, we, civil society organizations will really play that premium because you, you don't shift all the body to government alone. And uh, you know, government, they don't give account of whatever they do and the accountability of, a, of the government is not very poor, a high level of corruption in the system. So civil society can play a role. Stakeholders have come together. And civil society have really played that role in joint advocacy, uh, public alignment. We have the National Orientation Agency in the country, in the city in Abuja. That's what I, I those days I was going on, I used to talk MAMSA. Whatever you do, all this think Niger, think Nigeria. I remember those days in Radio Nigeria, before you come to the network news on Radio Nigeria, they do that mom say awareness, preaching awareness of people. But see, national Nigeria is not playing that role again. You know, so we can see that, that Nigeria has this, this diminishing return in Nigeria is affecting our, 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 our national cycle. I talk of national ethos, you know, values, morals. We don't have that again. We have anomy, one of the theories in, the theories in criminology. I know, but there's no the, 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 the society doesn't have the norms again. They don't know value again. You see boys going to Yahoo, somebody telling me what was the use of going to school? What is this going to be having a PhD? Where you can easily make money in society, in churches. You see Yahoo boys donating money in churches, and you see the values and the anomie. And then don't talk about anomie co collapse of the society. That's why we see the level of criminality in the criminality in the country, and people just want to make money at whatever, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to make money. No one but society will ask where you get money from. They just celebrate you and honor you. So it's that, that's a deterioration of our, our national ethics and mm. values and ethics. So that's why it, we talked about that's why national education should be able to talk to the responsibility. That's a civil society too. I would say BC civil society have really done a lot in trying to the government cannot just do everything alone because you know, you don't have to shift responsibility to government alone. So we have a stake together in one of the CSO, one of the I I, I do some uh, uh, orientation Dr. Ibe, I'm sorry. Along. I'm, hmm. I might just need to interrupt you briefly so that we can take uh, opinions of um, Ambassador Melvin Edge on this one. Ambassador, I understand that you want to react to some of the things that uh, Dr. Egbe has said, particularly, you know, in the first half, please feel free to yeah. do so. And also tell us other avenues you feel the government and also private uh, institutions can explore in uh, finding a lasting solution uh, to the problem, the security situation on the plateau. Let, let, me, let me start with uh, the issue of military funding, like my brother here said. Uh, let me want to completely uh, distance myself from uh, your session. He's well learned, a PhD holder, I'm very sure about that issue. The difference between budgetary allocation and budget, budgetary provision and allocation of funding to the agency or the parasta or the military is actually there are two different things. It's not enough to budget three, 11 trillion. How much was released to these agencies? I'm speaking from high fact. I have very good facts and I'm sure of my fact. You're a journalist. You can take your findings to the Federal Minister of Finance and find out when last the soldiers on the streets on the operations are paid. Now, the, federal, the last federal government was not very deliberate about security. It's not enough to approve 11 trillion or 18 trillion for, for, for the armed forces in the previous year while as a president. How much was released to them? How much actually went to equipment? How much actually went to the, to the allowances? Even if these allowances are paid, it's, it is actually very demeaning for a private soldier today is to be, to be, to be paid 1,200 naira per day where a driver, a driver in some private organization are paid 30,000 naira as DTs. When an average Nigerian soldier travel is paid less than 30,000 naira a day. Which country does that? Which country takes security serious and does that? So we are not talking about budgetary allocation. We, our prayers is that I know that the government we have on the plateau is a very serious government. And the one we have in Nigeria today is a very, very serious government. We, we hope and pray and are sure that President Tinibu we release every team men for the Nigerian military so that they can venture into technology, so that they can venture into training, they can, so that they can venture into the equipment that will give them early warnings to this conflict. Now, that's for that. Then, for the, on the issue of uh, government action, what government need to do? Government need to be deliberate about non kinetic approach. Like I told you, time without numbers, this conflict is only 30% military and security option. The remaining 70% is the political will. The remaining 70% is a community that will solve their problem. The community needs to solve their problem. The community needs to sit down together and dialogue. We have to take the issue of forgiveness, trauma, very, very seriously. The issue of trauma is so much. Look at what happened in Mango recently. If imagine family that was wiped out completely, six persons were killed. Who told you the relative of that family is going to easily forgive whoever killed the best killed them? It's not going to happen. What is government doing deliberately to ensure that these people are de-traumatized? They are, they are de-radicalized. Government need to do that. Government need to actually fund CSOs that don't have foreign, 
foreign funding. Most of the foreign uh, funding are not, are not coming anymore. Mm. Most of the donors are actually shying away from the Nigerian crisis. So government needs to be delivered. Government needs to provide funds to assist CSO to go into the community because government alone can't achieve this piece alone. We All right, Ambassador Eje, we'll, we'll pick up from there. I understand that we need to go on a quick ad break. When we return, of course, the, uh, the show continues. Stay with us. This is still Secure the Continent, and we're looking at matters of rising concerning security on the plateau in Nigeria. Well, we still have with us our uh, guest, uh, Dr. Dieli Aigbe, criminologist, security consultant, and also Ambassador Melvin Eje, executive director, uh, Global Peace and Life Rescue Initiative, and also security expert, both uh, joining from the plateau in Nigeria. Gentlemen, once again, thank you for hanging on. Now, we have just uh, roughly about a minute to wrap up the show. I'd like to start off with you, uh, Ambassador Eje, to just give us uh, your parting remark, 30 seconds, the way forward. Dr. Egbe, your, your, your parting remark, 30 seconds. One of the responsibilities of any government anywhere in the world is the ability to protect its citizens and mm. inability to do that shows that the government is vulnerable and weak. You know, the constitution empowers the government. One of the cardinal principle of any government anywhere in the world is to protect the citizen. Any ability to do that shows that the government is vulnerable and uh, and is not doing its fundamental human uh, uh, constitutional empowerment, what he's supposed to do. So, but I believe that uh, the, the president, the president, the Tunubu government and institution is very, when he came in in the inaugural speech, he talked about our security architecture need to be restructured and we have made recommendations to the government that should adopt uh, state police and community uh, policing. And I guess people are saying that Nigeria is not ripe enough. We can see what is this, the, the signal, the warning signs now. Nigeria, security internet, there's the internal security crisis in Nigeria. We need to form that synergy with the government and cooperate with the government. We talked about resilient building engagement. And right. uh, one of the responsibilities, the United Nations, uh, Kofi Annan did a responsibility to protect the season, whatever cost it to take. So without it to cost it to take the the, 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 the petitioning government to form a synergy to take to protect the life of citizens, should, they should adopt that strategy. All right, thank you so much. Let's hear from Ambassador AJ, 30 seconds. Well, let me let me urge a uh, people to remain calm and they should endeavor to cooperate with our security agencies. They must do that. As a matter of fact, they must work closely with them. You can't have them as your enemy and have the bandit as your enemy at the same time. We must work together to get our community safe. And the kudos to the Plateau State Governor who is on top of his game. We urge him to continue more, we urge him to also speak to his people to also remain calm and touch their life in the era of in the issue of uh, humanitarian needs the people are going through a lot the government must come out deliberately to assist them to ensure that the community is safe all right uh, gentlemen thank you so much for your time dr diadi ayegbe criminology security consultant and also ambassador melvin Eje, executive director global peace and life rescue initiative gentlemen once again thank you and also thank you for thank you. watching it's important that you remember to stay safe and alert at all times. Special thanks to my producer, Chioma Amare Bullam, and of course, uh, the crew behind the camera. My name is Dakbo Adigui. Bye for now.